So I'm going to just jump right into the lecture right now. Um, basically, UMG is on Unreal Motion Graphics. Basically, it is Unreal's um, set of tools to build user interfaces in Unreal. And that's, and that's where we're going this week, is we're looking at the UI um, tools in Unreal. Uh, present Unreal Motion Graphics, explain the widget blueprint, how to create a title screen using MG, how to create a HUD using UMG. So, the first thing that they, they want you to be aware of, let me actually bring up Unreal, is that um, there is the HUD class. But the HUD class is basically there to manage what are called widgets. So these widgets are pieces of your interface. They don't, they're not, they don't necessarily have to be the whole interface. It could be a piece of your interface. So one widget could be the health bar, for example. And so to work with UMG, it's necessary to create, they basically create these widgets, these widget blueprints. Um, and again, it's, it's, a, it's a blueprint because basically designers and, and artists are going to be working with it. So the designer panel. Um, one of the first things that you can, they basically allows the creation of the visual layout using the designer panel, graph is where logic. So it's like a blueprint. Basically, rather than having a 3D uh, viewport, you have basically a designer mode where you can lay down the elements in, two, in 2D space. Let's truly bring up. of your collection game. So let's put this in perspective. Uh, now. So I'm actually going to make another folder here. Bring the HUD into here. Well, here. And so I'm actually going to go, so it's going to be under user interface, and you want widget blueprint. And when you bring up, uh, you want to be using the user widget. So this will be B BP use PDF uh, blueprint widget. Um, I'm just going to just call it um, game stats. So what what's going to happen is is that so so one of the things that you're going to be if we go back let's just jump so we have an idea where we're going. Um, you are going to return to your collection game and upgrade with a better UI. Just straight up you are going to you are going to upgrade that that project. Um, this is a place where you could, in theory, go in um, and set it up with a main menu. Um, we can talk about, hey, maybe you program, like, there's a main menu, there's your game state, and then there is essentially your um, end game state. So this basically, again, um, we go from having a Boolean for game over to being essentially a, um, you know, we'd be an enum. Uh, let's just review what the enum um back to our here and that was under blueprint enumeration and that would be um, game state enum that's a bad that's a bad so I'm balking on this because um, actually let's call this app Application state enum. You know. um, I'm blanking. I'm balking on the word using game state because there's actually a game state class, and that is re related to um, replication. So we don't want to. I want to avoid using that. Bring this up here, and then I can add. So here it would be main menu. Gameplay, and 
this would be end end game. And so now, what again with that? This is uh, and here we can state of the game. Save that. We can jump to our game mode. And so in our collection game, we can then start by adding a new variable. And I'm going to use application state. And again, this is, I can go look for application. Let's go back and let's take a look at enum one more time. Okay, app state enum. There we go. There's the enum that we want. And we will compile and then we will again we'll leave it as the main menu as though. But we could we could in theory could go straight to gameplay. We could in theory go to end game. So this is this is and that will allow us to go go deal with. Uh, we can close this. We can go in theory go to the. Here's our HUD. Oh, there it is. So we would then replace this piece right here, uh, the game over bo boolean. Um, what we would end up doing is, again, we'll just replace this uh, with which on app state enum. So right now we've got gameplay HUD, game over HUD, and then we would then um, ultimately um, let me grab this would be the get application nope not overlapping efforts get so we would plug that into into here and then again these functions again would get changed um, essentially what we would end up being again right now we're getting going to the game mode um, but all, and this is we would, we would keep this for right now um, but what we would then do is create a let's create a new variable of a uh, this would be the game HUD widget and to be type of user widget So in this case, we would actually set, um, yeah, we want to set, and then we would want to uh, create widget. And again, we would go, again, the, we use BBW, so game, okay, game stats. And then we would essentially plug these in this way. So now I have a reference to to that that widget piece. So this is one of the things that, that your HUD class will have to do. It will have to create the widgets. So let's go back to, let's take a look at the widget class itself right now. Um, one of the things that you'll want to do One of the first things you'll want to do is open up and add a canvas panel. You could do a grid panel if you want to use that, but a canvas panel basically is a you know, designer. Um, and you're going to just 
Ooh. There we go. Um, and the idea be with the with the, the the canvas panel basically allows us to basically put. So we can go back up here. We can put let's say text now. Um, and now I can move I, with that panel. I can move it around. Let me delete this out, and I'll, I'm going to remove the panel. I'm just going to throw in. If I throw in my text, it is now the size of my panel. I mean, it's the size of the of the whole widget. And that's again what that's the purpose of this canvas panel. It allows us to, yeah, you know, I can bring it back in. I can resize it. I could not before. That's because I didn't have that the canvas panel to act as the root. And I don't know why most of these don't come with a canvas panel. But so here's my text block. I can be through like and where is the text? There we go. Let me pull out this. So right now here's the text. I'll tell you what, what bind does in a moment, but here we're gonna go into text block and we'll say this is main menu screen and we can change the appearance like the font let's open up the font uh, size we'll say uh, 64 Again. actually go a bigger 128 there we go Be a lot weird. We'll have to play play with this later on, or alignment and whatnot. Uh, justification. But we can also bring in other things, such as a button. So here is to focus. Uh, Toolset text. Image. Might have to put a their text over it for actual text. Yeah, so I'm gonna actually I'm gonna actually gonna bring a text and I'm gonna parent it to it. So here is text block and here I'm gonna go in. Where is the there we go. And then I'm actually going Set the color to be black. I'll just be okay. All right, so I'm going to compile. Uh, the other thing that we are we're going to need to do with begin play is uh, we do need to uh, attach I mean, it's so there is a remove all widgets I'm looking for the Node. Let's go back to our slides. So again, I've showed you the, you know, the what what the widgets and again they've got interface components. So you can have again borders, uh, checkbox, an image, a name slot, 
uh, progress bar, slider, text, text box. Text box basically being um, basically something you can ent enter input into. So here we go. They're doing a simple title, title screen here. So they're going to start with um, basically they're going to put images up. So this is using image, images and buttons. So basically they've got the game title here. I don't know if you have Take a look. You might you might have that. So what they're doing essentially, let's go back to let's let's go back to the HUD collection for one moment. Uh, I'll rename this. But what they're doing is they're they're bringing an image in, and where is? Appearance brush. There we go. It's under brush. Uh, do do they have game? Now, they don't have the, those textures in here to show, but let's take a look at no clue what this is. Oh, that is a UV map. Let's take a look at. Yeah, I'm just. There we go. We'll just just use the the. Why is it red? That's interesting. Hmm. We'll just we'll leave it like that. But essentially, basically, they're basically throwing up. They're throwing images up. You know, we can go. There's a texture here. Uh, you said delete value. No. I should be able to. So you can copy the internal name. Basically, this is, this will be useful. Like basically, resource object. That's not what we wanted. Uh, copy the display name. Image that's not what I'm, not what I thought. There we go. Browse to here it is in the content. This is the button I was looking for. So here it's under the mannequin. So essentially textures. Again, these are basically uh, image files, PNGs, targas. JPEGs. These are going to be essentially your core files for for uh, textures. So again, uh, some of these like these, this right here, this is a basically um, a normal map for this material. This is the normal map for the the robot parts essentially. So I'm gonna close this because we don't need to. So I'm gonna bring this, make this smaller. And I'm going to make this uh, 128 by 128. There we go. So I, I want to do want to keep this. It, it's a square. It's a square image. Let's keep this a square. So we're going to just drop this down in the corner. So let's go back to the slide. So basically, again, they're they're basically creating things with. Uh, buttons with an image. Essentially, again, they again they've got a button and they have an image. Again, that's overlaying on top of of the um, button itself. So they've got button start, button exit, and that's again one of the things that be be aware of what you're doing. Again, they have the canvas panel to start things off. Again, an image for the game title, a button, the image start, the button exit, and image exit. Uh, on click event. So basically, this is basically uh, when it's on. Yeah, basically on clicked, on pressed, on release, when hovered. Basically, when the when the mouse is over it, and then unhovered when it when basically um, you've you've left the the mouse has left the button area. 
and again right here they're opening up the level so for the main so basically they're making a main menu map and they're using open level so what they're doing so let's go back go to unreal uh, let's compile we'll save everything what they what they are effect effectively doing is they're making a file uh, new level um, I'm going to do an empty level. Um, and essentially they're make, they're saving this as the So they're basically they're isolating the uh, like where where I showed you before the HUD was using an enum. Again, that's that's assuming that we all we're doing this all in one level. Uh, what they're doing is they're making a main menu um, here and bouncing it, basically bouncing it um, back to, um, basically they're making a main menu here, which then loads up um, essentially uh, the, the game level itself. So. You can go in this direction. You can go with a single level doing everything. Again, here they are basically setting up, uh, create the, the widget, and they add it at the viewport. Why wouldn't it? Why was it not showing before? There we go. So we're going to compile this, and then we're going to go back to, again, we're going to go back to our game level. play we have again I gotta make this more in line with our game so again the issue that we've got right now is that I have my mouse because I'm in, I've got mouse control but as soon as I click into the game like as normal um, it disappears. Yeah, I don't have mouse control. Will will that'll be addressed in a moment? So again, what they're doing right now is they're setting. Um, so they're getting uh, get player controller. There's a set uh, show mouse cursor. So let's go back. Let's go to. Where are they setting that up? That's a good question. What, where are they? They're doing that in the level blueprint, but I don't want to be doing that in level blueprint. So, and again, we want to get uh, get player controller zero, and we'll turn that on. So, things that we should we would probably want to do. Um, essentially, let's add that function. Uh, draw main menu. Let's go back to the event graph just quickly. Let's grab these two right here. Let's just cut. Let's cut these. So actually, let's put these into. So if that's the case, um, and then the other thing that we would want to do is the game HUD. Um, so right now, I'm gonna uh, let's rename this to. This is no longer the game HUD. Uh, rename. This is going to be the uh, main menu widget.
then we would want to um, get it and then set we'll use set visibility that that is visible later on we will create um, well actually there'll be again the actual uh, game HUD widget and then we'll do the game over widget so what I do want to grab these two right here I actually want to grab them uh, I'll save and let's just jump to the uh, game HUD and I'm actually gonna pull this out over here just quickly and I'll attach this to the to the front end this draw the, the this draw text going on right here will will eventually go away same with the game over widget Uh, the, the here is the game over HUD. Uh, this this will eventually go away because you'll you'll make a widget that will have that instead. But again, over here we would we will have the grab these. And then we'll just plug these in just so I can keep keep this continuing. But basically, uh, and this would be turned off in this. And the game HUD, make sure this is turned off. So we're turning, basically hiding that widget. And so basically we'll be hiding and showing widgets for our purposes. Uh, let's compile. So if we go back to our collection game, why am I still losing my mouse control? Ah, here we go. Draw. Here we go. Didn't didn't have that function plugged in correctly. So we'll compile. Save everything. Now you can see right now. I'll click again. I can click on the button. All right. So let's go. Let's go back. The next step basically is. Uh, We want to go actually to, let's rename this to, so this one is not, no longer game stats. This is actually, let's rename this to um, main menu. Again, let's go, and we'll go down to user interface. We'll do the widget blueprint. Use user widget. Uh, BPW. This will be game HUD. Let's see. Uh, we can do user widget here. Pull this up so I can select it. This will be uh, BPW. if this is not going to work. Well, we'll see. Um, game over. Yeah, yeah. These are all, let me save these all. And so basically, these are all uh, widget blu blueprints. Again, let's go into game over. And we'll see. Bring in the canvas panel. Go to bring in some text. Uh, I'll bring in another. I'll bring another text just for the sake of having it at the moment, and then button. There we go. 
So here we go. This is um, here we go. Main menu, and this is going to be the game over. So let's give you some more room. Let's zoom in. So let's grab the button. bigger. So this will be not just main menu, but back to main menu. Grab view. So again, one of the things that we do, again, um, now that we know that we've got a button here, we can compile, uh, go back to our BB Collection HUD, draw the game over HUD. Uh, we do want to turn on the cursor in this case. HUD, widget, blueprint. So one of the things that, um, let's, go, let's look at our game HUD. Let's go into, here's the game over HUD, we'll save that, here's the main menu, let's look at the, the game HUD portion, and essentially this is going to be, again we're going to start with a panel, and the rest of it is going to be text. So when we look at basically um, Again, so basically there is, uh, we're going to just bring in multiple text boxes. Um, so let's start with, come on. Move these out of the way. So we'll start with you at... So right now I'm working at 2800 by 7, 720, 16 by 9. Um, you can grab this and we can make this smaller. And it's going to show you common dimensions. So we could be working on, you know, th these are more for like tablets. Again, the other screen size. I'm actually going to go back to 1800 by 720. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay stay there. Um, so 500 by 500. So 250. Let's bring this into two. Uh, 150. And then we'll say this is. So this is uh, X is 250. So the next one, uh, I don't want to click on that. 250. Good. 
fifty. So I'm just basically throwing numbers around at the moment, but this is coming at one fifty. So what? So what's going to end up happening is with these right here, um, this is going to be my time label, and this is going to be the time. All right, when we have text on screen, there's two. There's really two types of text that we're dealing with. Anything that's a label is going to be static text. That is something I'm labeling this. So again, for this purpose, this is going to be back. Where it is? So this is time. I'll set this to red as we did previously. And I'm going to bring my scale up to um, do 48. So 48 looks pretty good. So the next, the field, um, again, I'm going to bring that in, make that red. Scale of 48. But in this case, this is going to be just, I'm putting hashtags to be where, basically where it's going to handle. Uh, position X, we'll try 500. There we go. So 500 is looking fine. Um, this is going to be our score label. And this will be our score field. And this is going to put this back at 500. select both of these uh, set the color to and these I believe I set these to green and we'll make these size of 48 and so the label here is not text blocks is just score and here, our text blocks here is going to be, we'll use five. We'll go six, what the heck. So this is, and why why are we using the hashtag? So that, so that we can see this is placeholder. And it's intentionally placeholder. Um, so that when, when, we, when the, 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 this HUD piece runs, it's actually going to do some, it's actually going to replace the, these, this, these texts. Um, let's go and let's actually go and so let's click on the field. Um, there's this bind right here. Click on it and create binding. I'll create a function that will return the binding data for this property. So basically, this is a function that is basically what is going to be put into this text field. Um, we're going to get the game mode. I mean, we're going to cast it to BP, uh, BP, there we go, collectible game mode. I didn't put the BP on it. So uh, we'll just break this link. So that's the first thing we're going to do is cast, get, get our correct game mode. Um, and if that's as collectible game mode, we want to get time remaining. And we'll plug that right into the return value here. So it's going to go to text and integer. And we'll plug that in there. And I'm going to grab these two nodes because essentially I'm going to compile this, uh, go back to the HUD. So we'll go back to the, not the event graph. There we go. I want to go back to the designer. That's the button I was looking for. I expect it to be over here for some reason. There we go. I'm going to click on the the field for score. And we can now go make a minding for that. Again, 
break this button, break this link as we did before. Again, first thing to do is cast to the game game mode, and then get game score. Again, we're just plugging in that value right there, and that's all we really knew is basically you know, and we can do um, a lot more. Again, it's it's it is a blueprint graph, so we can control, um, like we can form, like let's say we were dealing with a float, we could uh, uh, format how that float shows up. So there's more, there's more. Again, there's more. We can again. I'm just plugging in a piece of piece again, a piece of a value for somewhere else for our purposes. So let's compile. So let's go back to, let's close the HUD. So let's go back, which we need, we need to go to our We need to go to the main menu one more time. All right, so let's click on the button. And now let's go to the graph. And now we can, um, for our purposes, uh, we don't need to use these nodes for right now. But what we want is on... Here's, here's the button. Here we go. On click. I'm not sure why it wasn't showing up. Do I? No. Content. So basically what we want to do is on click. What what do we want to do? Um, for our purposes, um, it is basically we do want to cast right to our, our collectible game mode. And in our case, it is we want to um, set the, the application state. And this is going to be going from main menu to gameplay. Now, we can do this, um, but we do have that the macro. Uh, we can call, actually, we can re re call restart game. So let's think about that. Now, if we're going to do that, let's go back to our game mode just quickly direction map action game where is it so let's take a look at the start game macro I mean one of the things that we're doing right here is ooh, that's broken at the moment that's interesting um, rather than using the game mode over boolean We'll set the application state. In this case, will be gameplay. And I'll plug this in so that all of this starts starts off. And then let's take a look at the collection game. Uh, we should again. I should be using this variable right here. So. We have that clock function, and again, rather than um, essentially clear clear function by name, uh, we've got the game over here. Again, this is a let's we'll use the application state variable. We'll set it, and this is again we'll go to the end game state. Compile. So we've got we've got way go from our main menu to our gameplay state what we need to do um, now to our end game state so let's go back to the HUD for the game over again we did add that button right here and we'll just BTN return to main menu we'll go to the graph we'll add on click for it Again, I'm, I've had the collectible game mode, this, these nodes right here in memory. 
on the clipboard. In this case, basically, we're just going to go and we will go and um, set the application state back to the main menu. Now, ideally, we probably want to do more than just um, like basically, we probably back in the game mode, we probably want to actually add a um, like they've got a start start game macro. Um, and we've got an event to call the start game. Um, I'd probably write functions to basically control when I go to the main menu, when I go to um, the end game screen to control that. But this is fine for our purposes right now. Let's just we'll press play. And I've got to go back. why that's going on in the background but here is the button we start game oh and what's what's not happening right now um, so let's go back uh, let's go back to the HUD So I need to create another, so this is the mode I want to grab. So rather than being main menu, this is going to be BPW uh, game HUD. The, we're going to set that. value and then we're going to add to viewport and essentially we're going to, so we're going to add again um, you could remove them from the viewport we're going to just do hide hide and show basically um, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the game over HUD And I'm going to just, again, add to viewport. So we'll save that. Let's now go to the game, uh, draw game HUD. So for our purposes, we can take out these drawing nodes because the widget's going to handle that now. Oh, come on, get out of there. So for the draw game HUD, basically we're going to get the, grab the main menu widget, and use set visibility. visibility. Um, this is not going to be uh, hidden. Again, we're going to have three of these. Main menu widget, the game HUD. That will be the, the target here. And this is going to be visible. And then the game over widget, we'll get that and we'll plug that in as a target. And this will be hidden. And this is basically what we need to do. We're going to set the mouse cursor. and then set the visibility of each each of the widgets. Hold on one sec and I'll take your question. What's the what's the question? 
Uh, that the, go look go look into the documentation. Like you're talking about, like you, you don't want the Windows mouse cursor. You want a different cursor design. Go into the documentation. Go. This is me me telling you go look into the do, window the, into the documentation of of uh, Epic Games to, to find that. The answer, yeah, I'm I'm purposely not answering that so to pour, force you into the documentation because you should be reading the, their documentation. Now I am really going to grab. Uh, I'm going to grab all of these because essentially the main menu, so and this is what the, the, I can delete all of these. And I can plug this in. And I can just, I just, you know, turn that on. Uh, this is the main menu. Um, yeah, draw main menu. So the main menu, I'm going to be visible. This will be hidden, and this will be hidden. And I can go to the game over HUD. Delete you. I'll just delete you. No, I'll just delete you too. I go in. I can plug you in. You're hidden. You'll be hidden, and you'll be visible. So if we press play, and I've got, and one of the things I'm going to do right away is I'm going to go back to my game mode, and we're going to do time remaining. Just because we want to test, we're going to do five seconds. See, there we go. Five, four, three, two, one. So game over. Back to main menu. Back to here. And I need to be button. Yeah, so there's something. The restart game is not calling correctly. It's, it's not setting the time correctly, which is interesting. Oh, you know what's going on? No. Uh, yeah, no. One of the things that's going on is the... What's going on is... Let's go back to our game mode. Game over. Um, it's in our event graph. Uh, close. There we go. So on begin play, we actually are calling start game. We don't need to call start game anymore. So that's what happening is that so let's compile we can go back to our collections map and there we go so the, now we've got our main menu the button's happening that's happening correctly back to main menu and there is an issue when we restart the game that's not getting called correctly for some reason let's take a look at the Game mode. Start game. Start game. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Why is that not being set correct? So, well, there's a bug right now. This is not being set correctly. Uh, time remaining. Why is that not being called correctly? There we go. This is not being set. That was a, a lowercase c. Ooh, come on. Let's get... There we go. So the function name here was not correct. And so basically the, the original timer was still running. So let's...
but still not not functioning correctly. We'll we'll have to take a look, go through a little bit later to figure out like what I I probably have done something very simple that's causing this error issue. Um, but I am getting through you know each of the HUD pieces correctly. I need to figure out why the restart is not happening correctly uh, when I call it the second time. Let's just go through again. We looked at like how to bind. You know, here's the text. How to bind to, to it. Um, I believe they're going through and they're basically they are. Uh, are they using two different? Yeah, they're using two different different text fields. That's good. Um, they have a HUD pro a progress bar. Um, we don't have a get health, so there's not, not much use here using the HUD. Um, again, they're creating the widgets and they're adding the, the widgets to the viewport. We're also, again, saving them to a variable within the HUD so we can control them. And that's pretty much what it's asking you to do. Um, the lab has you to do two exercises. Um, so in this exercise, you'll create an about screen to see how you can switch between the title and the about screen. That is essentially basically um, having you switch between two different widgets. So there'll be an about widget and there'll be a title screen widget. So the buttons basically are going to turn, turn on and off those widgets effectively. Again, when they when they click uh, button return, um, they are removing and they are they're removing and adding to to the to the so clicked on about they basically they set the visibility of the uh, main menu to hidden and they add the the about uh, to the screen and when you return it's removing it from from it and it's setting the the main menu back to visible so that that's another way you can do this. get bin play they're showing the mouse cursor uh, they're creating again creating each of the each of the widgets and setting it to the viewport um, they're creating the the about so this is the title title widget here is the um, this is the 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 about widget and they're setting there's a variable inside the title wi a widget which they're they are setting effectively so in this this year uh, basically when the um when the player hits the enter key a status panel will appear in front, front of them so Um, one of the things that what's going on here is basically they are talking about, um, we go back to the lab. Um, it says using the first person project. Um, you don't need to use, you do not need to create a new project this week. All right. You can, you can use like the third person template. Um, you could add, add this to the, to the game. This, this is a panel you could add to the game. Um, I'm not too really worried about where you do it as long as you do it. Doesn't matter if it's first person or third person. It's more more of an issue, more of a scenario. Basically, you need to, basically you need to be able to add, you know add you can add the panel. Um, one of the things that you can do, and um, hey, one of the things that you could potentially do uh, extra credit. Create a panel that opens up when you when it opens up, it shows the cursor. You can cut, 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 put to put the um, put the cursor into the text field and type type something into there, and have a button to basically assign that to a variable inside um, you know either the 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 pawn or in the game mode, like basically like a player name.
So here is basically your, again, I've jumped around, I've shown you like, hey, here's how we can use Enum. Here's how we can do this, um, the main menu as part of our game. Um, they're showing you how to do the main menu as part as its own level. And you go from the one level to another level, essentially. Um, any questions about what you need to do? No? All right. I'm going to stop the recording right here. And I'm going to basically you're free 